In this problem, our goal is to find the energy configuration of a sphere that has a uh, radius of r, so a radius of big R, and a uh, and an energy or a charge density of k times r, where r is just or where k is just a uh, just a constant. So um, the uh, the the dense the charge density changes as a function of the radius here, and this is a solid sphere. And again, uh, so we're trying to find the energy configuration, which is just a fancy way of saying what's the uh, total energy stored into this um, into this configuration. And the way we find the energy stored is like uh, when, when you know you someone or something made this sphere of energy charge or, or positive charges. They took all these positive charges and just pulled them from infinity and just uh, slowly started stacking them up. And so there's a good amount of work that has to be done in order to put those, uh, pull those charges and nail them into place and to make them a sphere here. So um, the energy that's currently stored in here is actually equal to the work that you put in. So what we're really trying to find is what's the total amount of work to pull all those charges in to make the sphere. And uh, the problem asks us two ways to do this. Uh, to find two different ways to do this and one of the ways that we learned in this chapter was that uh, work is equal to one half times the integral of the charge density times the volume uh, times uh, the uh, infinitesimal uh, volume element right here and so uh, or sorry not the volume um, this is potential times the potential right and then uh, another way for us to find it is to find the work is equal to um, the epsilon naught over 2 times the integral of the electric field squared times uh, volume element here. And I want to draw your attention over here. And uh, if we look at what this potential is, and we kind of expand on what potential is in this form, is that potential is actually the, the, well, the negative integral from uh, infinity to some point into that... Um, into that sphere of the electric field dotted with the path that it took. So regardless, what we need to do is uh, we need to find the electric field because both of these ways of uh, finding the work, it depends on the electric field. So uh, we'll go ahead and find that electric field first. So let's see here, we'll drop it down to an E. <clears throat> All right, so the electric electric field uh, is can be found by taking the integral or you know using Gauss's law so epsilon naught dotted with dl right here is equal to the charge that's enclosed divided by epsilon naught and so what we can do here is you know take a Gaussian sphere that is um, you know symmetrical with it so that dot turns us into a um, um, into just a multiplication of the magnitude. Let's just assume that is a concentric sphere right there. There we go, it's, uh, it's pretty concentric. We'll call that concentric, All right? Um, so we'll look back over here. And so we turn those, um, this uh, dot product here into a, a uh, multiplication. Sorry, this isn't a DL, this is actually a DA. So, so our a area is just the area of uh, our Gaussian surface which is 4 pi r squared. And then uh, the, Q, the Q enclosed here is actually just the integral of that um, charge density integrated all over the, the volume of the sphere here. So we have to integrate it, not multiply it, because the, the uh, um, charge density changes as you move dis to different locations of the, uh, of the sphere. So we'll go ahead and take the integral here. K, uh, we'll just call this R naught. That's our charge density times our volume element. And then um, divided by epsilon naught. And if we look at this volume element right here, we can just go ahead and just make the substitution now, which is just uh, R naught squared, um, your standard volume element here, dr, d theta, d phi. And we'll just do over the um, spherical limits here. So now I'll go ahead and isolate out the magnitude of the electric field. And that is uh, really 1 over 4 pi 
epsilon naught. Always try to keep it in that form. Two, three. All right, and then um, we'll do, oops, zero to two pi for the phi, zero to pi for theta, and zero to r, because we're just pointing someplace into this, um, um, into this sphere. dr naught, d theta, d phi, and this is a an r naught. We'll just, I know I didn't explicitly say it, but we'll just call this uh, R naught. It's cause, just because we're integrating over some point, so we're just going to try to delineate between the two. So um, that's why we have uh, different R naughts there. So these R's all kind of condense down to R cubed once you do the division and canceling things out. And so we'll go ahead and drop down to this and pull out all the constants for pi epsilon naught. Um, we now have an r squared here after this integral. And then what's left is a 2 pi from the uh, the phi integral. And now we just have our the theta integral, which is a negative cosine uh, at, evaluated at pi minus a negative cosine evaluated at zero in parentheses. And then we have our r integral, 0 to r, r naught, theta, d naught, sorry. Um, this is actually a, a different r that we're integrating over. So uh, when you combine these, that's why it's an r cubed. That was incorrect. You bring this down, and then you have the r squared right here. Anyways, um, moving forward, 4 pi epsilon naught. Oh, we'll just well, actually before we move on, let me go ahead and cancel things out. So, um, let's see here. This two turns into a two right here. This pi goes away. We have a pi right here, and then this is actually a plus one. This is actually a minus one. So that ends up being a two. So that two this ends up being a two in the denominator. So those will cancel out here. And then what's left is, let's see here, a um, k over epsilon naught r squared. Uh, and then that integral for our r, which I'm just going to leave for the very end. r, we're just doing some house cleaning right now, dr naught. All right, so now... Uh, let's see here. We'll go ahead and evaluate that integral, and we'll kind of change the form of everything. So, and you'll see why in a second, one over r squared. And so, once we evaluate this integral here, and I want to move it down here to have some more space, actually. Let's go ahead and scroll up. So this integral can go two ways because we're dealing with a threshold. Once it comes through. Um, the integral, so there's no charge density, and then the moment you cross this threshold into the sphere, then you're encountering charge density. So we have to do uh, two different, we'll have to split this up into two different integrals. So we have an integral for when r is less than big R, so once it's inside the sphere. And then we'll also have an integral for r is greater than r, so whenever it's outside the sphere. So when it's inside the sphere here, um, that integral is equal to k over 4 pi epsilon naught r to the fourth divided by r squared. And then whenever it's down here, that integral, it, the whole the whole uh, expression ends up being this. So it's evaluated at r equals 4, then over r squared. And then that means that our electric field on the inside, so r is less than r, big R, is equal to k over 4 pi, or sorry, 4 over epsilon naught r squared to the r hat, and then our electric field on the inside, so r is greater than big R, is equal to 4 over, or k over 4, oh gosh, I'm so used to writing epsilon naught, 4 epsilon naught r to the 4th over little r, 
and of course purring the r-hat direction and so so we found the electric field both on the outside on the inside of this um, expression and we'll use that to feed into these two different um, uh, uh, work equations so we can find eventually find the electric uh, energy con configuration for this